All right, and we're back for another episode of the Sports Department Podcast with Justin Valentovic, Stephen Bologna, Stephen Clark, and Joe Palantonio. And we did it. We made it to the finish line of the NFL season. Super Bowl 55 is finally here. We're recording it on Saturday. We'll probably drop the same day. So the Super Bowl is effectively tomorrow between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And for the first time ever, the host city, their home team, is playing in the Super Bowl. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are obviously playing at Raymond James Stadium. But before we get into this game, guys, what's going on? Not, not much. We're doing okay. We're not going to be seeing the fire. Uh, the cannons fired on Sunday, unfortunately. Um, they, they took that out. So, yeah. You know. Hopefully we don't see them at all because they said they're going to fire it off only if the Bucs win and not during the game if the Bucs score because they still have to try to remain as a neutral site. So. This, is, this is one of the coolest Super Bowl matchups in a while um, with all the with all the talk surrounding the, the comparisons as is Michael Jordan against LeBron yeah. James. The, the talk about how the Chiefs are a team that's just coming off a Super Bowl win while the Bucks have been impoverished for a very, very long time. You have two teams that wear the same color, which I am not a fan of. I think back to back years. It's disgusting. Back to back, absolutely. Hey, Ugh. it's okay though. At least the Bucks Ugh. are wearing the whites with the brown pants. So at least it's not, you know, Still, the red. The red. Their, pri- the their red primary pants. colors are the same. I agree with Joe. They brought back the cream sickle. They should have. One night only. Yeah, that would have been nice. Yeah, but no, Joe, I agree with you. This 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 QB matchup is like one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest well, of all time, too. Let's kind of use that as our jumping off point then. Go, where, go ahead. You know, it's kind of this could potentially be the changing of the guard where, you know, for right now, Tom Brady is, you know, the much agreed upon go of football because of, you know, just the success he had in winning Super Bowls. But a lot of people think talent wise and just the trajectory Patrick Mahomes is on right now he very well could take that mantle from him when his career is all said and done. And there's kind of a, like a topic going around on sports talk radio where in order for Mahomes to eventually or potentially become the goat, he has to beat Brady. And if he doesn't, he can't do that. Uh, All right. How do you guys see this impacting Mahomes legacy? If he does lose to Brady in the Super Bowl? All right. As much as I'm a Brady fan, that has nothing to do with with, with his legacy at all. Um, We're not going to sit here and act like Brady has won every single Super Bowl he's went to and all that stuff. Um, You lose some, you win some, you lose some. Yes. It would be a big help to his legacy in securing that title of being the goat in the probably very near future, but I, I, I don't think a loss here really affects it just because of how successful he's been and how early his career, like he, this is literally his third season as a starter. He's been to the AFC championship all three years as a starter, been to the Super Bowl two years and won a ring, won one ring so far, potentially another ring tomorrow. So I don't think it affects his legacy at all. Not one bit. If Where, he loses. Where's the logic in that? You're saying that Tom Brady is considered the goat, but the quarterbacks that he he's beaten, like he never had to beat, the equivalent of Tom Brady in the beginning yeah. of his career. Like he never had to go against Montana. He never had to go against Young. Oh, exactly. That's like Elway. That's like, like it's like he's the goat because he went against Bell Home and Donovan McNabb to win Super Bowl. Like it has nothing really to do with you. Because in that case, I mean, imagine Russell Wilson beating Peyton Manning and almost beating Tom Brady in back to back years. And where's his name at that point? Yeah. Well, I well, think. No, go ahead. Sorry, Justin. No, you go. Okay. Thank you. I, like I think this I, like is, I think this is <laughs> this is crucial for Mahomes' is for legacy. I mean, when you talk about how hard it is to get to the Super Bowl, and how many teams have the Super Bowl window closed in the in the matter of an off season, I mean, just off the top of the head, Philly, Atlanta, Carolina, uh, the Rams. I mean, we we all know that the Chiefs have a really high chance of getting back here next year, but as you see, the AFC around them is starting to get built up. And they had some scares in, in this postseason. So if you're Mahomes, you have to take advantage of every Super Bowl you get into, and you're gonna have to outduel the goat here. Uh, I think, think, I think he has to win this one. Well, and the thing is too, like with Tom Brady, like yeah, he has six Super Bowl rings, but the first three, and he was perfect in his first three earlier on. The losses didn't start piling up until the second dynasty of the Patriots, basically, too. So really for Mahomes, the key is try to win early and often because, yeah, he's locked in for, you know, 15 years or whatever it is down the road. 
But if he can get the wins in early now, you know, that'll only help him. And this is like what we kind of alluded to before. This is the first time we've seen, you know, the greatest player of one generation take on the greatest player of probably the next generation because we never saw LeBron versus Jordan. Like, this is something we've really kind of never seen before either. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I the, the thing when you're, you're talking about who needs this more, the answer is Mahomes. Tom Brady's legacy has already been written. Everyone has already made their decision about where Tom Brady is. Mahomes is still, still a little bit up in the air. There's still a lot of people that are hesitant to put him as one of the greatest of all time. He, and you're not going to have – Andy Reid's not going to be there forever. You're not going to have these weapons forever. I mean, this is the time to strike. And also, if Mahomes has a, has a game – where he throws a couple turnovers, people are going to start to look a little funny. Like that's back to back years, Super Bowls, multiple turnovers. That's gonna that's gonna raise some eyebrows. I think it's it's not like Tom Brady, um, where at this point in his career, it's it's already set in stone. He doesn't need this. And if we remember, this could be a revenge game here. Last season, or excuse me, two seasons ago, um, the upset. In Arrowhead, Tom Brady and the Pats come in, and uh, maybe thanks to a, a little bad offsides call, but Tom Brady came in and they took care of business, and they went on to the Super Bowl. So this is this could be a revenge game for Patty. Yeah, no, um, I agree. I agree to the fact that Mahomes does need this more. Um, Brady doesn't need anything. He could go to the Super Bowl the next three years and lose all of them, and it doesn't affect his legacy at all. Um, but in, in, on the other hand, too, that it doesn't. It, it doesn't hurt him if he loses two at the same time, Mahomes, well, just because... Well, that's the thing. Mahomes is so yeah. good, and we kind of have the feeling the Chiefs will be back there. But also... At least, yeah, sometime yeah. in the future, like the, yes. Before it's said and done, he'll be in another Super Bowl. And if he isn't, that's just something horribly wrong what happened in Kansas City. But for Brady, you know, we talked about it last episode. If he wins, though, this kind of puts to bed the argument of Belichick and Brady because until we see Bill go do it with the Patriots without Brady you know, the Brady side of things have all the munition in the world. So it's almost yeah. Brady for himself has a lot more riding on this for how he could cement himself and distance himself from being just a system quarterback. Um, I already think he already did that. He already, I, did, ma- I think so too. Yeah. He, he already made it to the Super Bowl. Um, Bill and his Patriots didn't even um, sniff the playoffs this year. They were close at some points, um, but didn't even sniff it. And Tom took his five seed Tampa Bay Buccaneers all the way to the Super Bowl. I think he already proved that the, like, like Edelman said in the interview, it's not the Patriot way that was going on in new England. It's the Tom Brady way that was going on. And he brought his Tom Brady way down to Tampa and look where they are right now. Well, it's, I mean, to, to say that it was all Tom and no Bill Belichick based on, I I did not say that. I just said it was more Tom than Bill. (laughs) To say that it's more Tom than Bill after looking at just this year would be to completely ignore the context around both of those organizations. Absolutely, just completely just disregard the fact that the Patriots had an entire defense opt out, that they were in cap hell. Yeah, that I, they don't have, they just didn't really have any talent on practically the Practically the same team as last year, but practically. The, mm, not really. Jamie not Collins. Really. It was an all, all time. Cat, like it was at times they looked- also had cam had no offensive weapons like if we see next year you know with a full offseason minimal covid implications and bill could actually build a team around whoever said quarterback will be at this point at this rate i don't know who the hell that's gonna be you know they'll probably draft somebody you know then we can probably give it a fair shake but you look at the the bucks you know they were building for tom brady for two years so it's kind of hard to make a complete statement until we see the patriots kind of give it a go Okay, That's so least. what if Tom Brady, <clears throat> what if Tom Brady wins the Super Bowl this year? Does that put it to bed? He got there already, with it, with the same exact roster from last season that went eight and eight. Sorry, not, excuse me, Antonio a win, Brown, a win, that. a win would carry him for me at least. The argument above Belichick until we see Bill trying to go for it, and if they fail, and if they fail and never get back to it, then it's official. It he, it's kind of it works as a placeholder until we see Belichick give it a go. And if they never get back, then that's it. Just because the Bucks were eight and eight last year doesn't mean that they don't have a top five defense in this season. It doesn't mean that they don't have tremendous coaching on both sides of the ball this very season. It doesn't mean that they, they had don't the same coaching that. last year. No what, one's what's saying that. The difference. They have great weapons. It's a great it, same it's weapons as last year. 
It's literally the same. They team. have they have an actual functioning quarterback this time. They went eight and eight last year. Doesn't mean the team isn't talented and well coached. Well, of course, the team's they, talented. They, they went eight and eight because Jameis went thirty and thirty. <laughs> and you add a good quarterback, and look at that. They're in the Super Bowl. Exactly. So that's why you look at the look at the Patriots. Yeah, wait to see if they add a good quarterback, and then wait and see what happens. Like but, a little bit of what's around them. Like the Bucks have a they, great they do right now. Yeah, they do. Much better so, than the Patriots, than what the Patriots are rolling out. It's more talented than what we, the Patriots were. We're, we're, we're going back down this rabbit hole that we did on the last uh, episode that I thankfully wasn't here for. So let's kind of. Why were you thankfully weren't here for? Thankfully. Yeah. It got heat. <laughs> it, well, I was, you know, plowing the roads to make sure you guys could drive up and down. You know, Joe can get that refresher, though I was nowhere in his area. But then nonetheless, <laughs> let's move on back to the game. Actually, let's talk, let's talk about the game itself, actually, at this well, point. Thing. Yeah, the actual Super Bowl, the little thing that's going on. Plenty of prop bets, but we'll we won't really get into that. What guy, what color do you think the Gatorade is going to be? Orange. It was orange last year. Um, yeah, purple. Plus eight hundred. Uh, I'm going to go just red because both the teams' colors are red. Okay. Orange. I wish we had like an inside source, like with the Gatorade girl. Well, did you see on Twitter someone was like staying on the highway? And they were listening to the sound check of the national anthem yeah. and timing it on their phone for like yeah. insider information. That's so it's like, so funny. It's like nice. Um, so, or just a safe bet, though, I would say. I guess if we're doing betting podcast again for yeah. bringing that back into this, <laughs> <laughs> so, Orange is the safe bet. So, pretty fun. For the Super Bowl, for either team, what, who do you think outside of the quarterbacks? Because, you know, both of them not have to play perfect, but they have to be at the top of their game. Like we've seen Tom Brady have bad games and get bailed out by like a Julian Edelman or a James White. But who do you think from either team will need to have a good performance in order to carry their team a bit offensively or even de- defensively? Uh, the player, the player that I, I've been talking about, and this is um, you, you, you see the Chiefs on defense. Tyron Matthews everywhere. Um, he is all over the field where the ball is. The honey badgers around. Uh, he has the ability to just. He just has the best instincts, I think, out of anybody in the league. And it's going to be it's going to be really difficult um, for the Bucks to have to to deal with that because the the problem the, the really the safety play of the Packers was dismal. Uh, we saw we saw what happened last week. You you bring a guy like Honey Badger into the mix who can throw Tom off a lot because Tom does a lot of work with his eyes. I don't know. I, I think he's going to have to be big in this game. Yeah, no, um, that's a great pick. Definitely. Just because of all the reasons you said, but um, I think anybody on the Buccaneers defense needs to step up just because they need to get at least a couple stops on third down. They need to be able to, get some turnovers because if it comes becomes a shootout this game, if it's a shootout between Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes, it's a hundred percent going Patrick Mahomes' way just because the youth that Patrick Mahomes has, the stamina, just everything Patrick well, Mahomes has going for him, I think. Well and the one thing Mahomes has significantly over Brady is being able to escape the pocket and extend plays. So Pierre Paul and Shaq Barrett especially are gonna have a lot of trouble having to try to contain Mahomes, keep him in the pocket because we've seen it when there's busted plays and Mahomes runs to the sideline, you know, and finds Kelsey sitting in the middle of the hash marks with no one in sight. You know, it's because he was able to run to the sideline and throw it across the field. So they're going to have to work and contain with Sue, Vita Vea, the whole defensive line. And the secondary is, do we know if Antoine Winfield's playing or not? I believe he's playing. He must be. He probably is. So um, and him and Sean Murphy bunting, they're going to have mm. to figure out how to at least stay in front and stay in front of, you know, Hill and Kelsey, because Kelsey had one of the greatest tight end seasons ever this yeah. past year. These teams it, played before. I don't, I don't yeah. remember how Rick Hill put up a stat line that looked like yeah. Clark and Madden. Mm. <laughs> I, I cannot wait for Sean Murphy bunting to get torched this entire game. It's going to happen. <laughs> For, for some reason, I just don't like the guy. Um, but one headline to look out for is Eric Fisher not playing in this game. Mahomes, sturdy left tackler that always protect, protects the blind side. I think Mike Remmers and, is playing instead of him, right? Well, Remmers is the right tackle, and oh. Martinez Rankin will be starting left tackle. And, and Mike Remmers was the tackle who was supposed to be blocking uh, Von Miller in Super Bowl 50, and Miller went on to go win Super Bowl MVP. <laughs> so... <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. So that that might be a headline to watch. You know, Reed might want to draw something up where he does a lot of play action, roll out of the pockets. Um, but I think I think Tyree Kill is really going to have to step up here. We know he's going to, but whenever he gets the ball, he, he's going to have to make something happen. Look for um, a lot of deep throws to him. I, I think that secondary is still so young, and when they go up against a veteran core like this Chiefs team and, and this receiving core, and even Travis Kelsey, I think it's going to be a, a long day for him. Yeah, because looking at you know the Chiefs, also Frank Clark and Chris Jones. They're as important as like Shaq Bear and Jason Pierre Paul because Brady can't move. And we've seen it, you know, the, the second Super Bowl, especially against the Giants. Once they start hitting Brady around, he just kind of flips out in short. Like the old edges, if you hit Brady three or four times, you know, you can control him and control the game a little bit. So they're going to also have to get there equally as much. But also the Chiefs defense is, I think it's a lot better than the Bucks, just top to bottom. Like it's just filled out more depth wise. Um, yeah. I think the Bucks have a superior front seven yeah they um, do but the chiefs has a lot better of a secondary no absolutely just absolutely. in general the chiefs have the better overall team you're not even comparing defenses to defenses they have a lot of high-end talent the bucks are deep they like other than the secondary they are they have studs at at every level, both sides of the ball. Well, especially linebacking core. Special, cro- it seems like that could be a crux for them. Like um, Devin also, White and Levante David are a pair of great linebackers. Really, since like Bowman and Willis, have we seen two great, you know, linebackers that play well together and just cover the field sideline to sideline together. There also is a big um, coaching and experience here. We're talking about Andy Reid coaching in his watch. I don't even know what. Third, third, Super, third Bowl Super Bowl, billionth postseason game, Bruce Arians. Exactly. Barely made it to Bruce. the playoffs with the Cardinals. And Byron Leftwich, yeah. who was a failed Jaguars yeah. draft pick. Byron Leftwich. This is an extremely different, extremely experienced, uh, experienced coaching gap here. Uh, Andy Reid is going to be probably without his son for this game, which hopefully yeah, everything's not, okay with that situation. Terrible news. He was in a car accident, which left a five-year-old in critical condition. Came out. Alcohol might have been you know, involved. So that's definitely a terrible scenario for everyone involved. So you have to wonder too, could that be a factor on the coaching staff? Of Cause obviously his mind won't all be there. And that's the linebacking yeah. coach for the, for the chiefs, but a factor we haven't really talked about. And I want to get your opinion on it. How much of an advantage do you think it is for the chiefs, especially with COVID that they don't have to go anywhere? Cause normally we see teams get there, you know, the Monday before the super bowl, so they almost have a whole week to adjust to it, but the chiefs are flying in, I think Saturday morning and the, the bucks, they just get to stay home and sleep in their own bed. So that has to be a factor as well. Definitely. Definitely. The tra- traveling to a game, even like, even if I just took a quick bus ride back in high school, it, it's, it sucked taking those bus rides. I know they're flying millions of miles, thousands of miles away. Um, but it, it, instead of just, you know, driving to the stadium, like I used to do for a home game too, it, 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 it is a big difference. Cause you have to prepare earlier. You have to wake up earlier. You have to do a bunch of other things earlier. And it's, it, it sucks. It, it sucks for the chiefs, but it, it's also a huge, I think it's a very big advantage. The Buccaneers played eight games on that turf all season. Um, the, the, and they're proud to play their Super Bowl there. So they're used to the turf. They know how it feels. Like Roger said in the game in Lambeau in the playoffs, we know how this turf is. We know the soft spots are this time in January. Like we have the advantage here. Obviously didn't work out for them, but um, it, it's a huge advantage for the Buccaneers. And there's supposed to be some weather in the morning, and that's not supposed to rain during the game. So you got to wonder, you know, we kind of heard the stories of like, you know, during the ice bowl, like – Lombardi leaving the heaters off or like Don Shula one time in Miami kind of letting the grass get a little wetter. So you have to wonder if, you know, home field advantage legitimately could be home field advantage this time too. I don't know. I mean, it's the Super Bowl. Um, I don't know how much it's going to be like the Buccaneers noise pumped in like Buccaneers stuff on the screen. It, it, it I think it's I going think to so. Play. You, mean, you mean it's not going to look like when Miami Marlins play like home games in Baltimore and they yeah. put all the digital stuff up for them to make it seem like they're home? I think it's going to play like a neutral field. Um, it, it's yeah. it's not like Tampa Bay is some notorious home field advantage with with no fans, with the Super Bowl atmosphere on top of it. 
I don't think it's going to be that big of a difference. Can you just imagine, though, this stadium, non-COVID, with all Buccaneers fans in there? I mean, it would be... It would be insane. It would be nuts. Um, no, I don't know if it would be all Buccaneers fans. It's the Super Bowl. Very expensive. Yes, but I... I but also... A lot of fans what, would, would spend but, the house for a but, second. But a lot of the... Especially Tampa Bay, who you know, turning into the city of champions apparently this year. But, <laughs> you know, usually they do like raffles for like season ticket holders. So the fact that, you know, it's right outside their door, you know, they don't have to, they could spend more on the ticket rather than, you know, travel, airfare, hotel, and all that stuff. I so, stadium. Yeah, the horrible looking stadium, but with, uh, I don't know. So any last thoughts, like in storylines you guys want to talk about before we give our picks and Super Bowl MVP and kind of wrap this one up? I, I don't think so. No, I think we did a really good job, actually, of breaking down all the storylines. Um, now I'm, I'm ready to do picks when you are. Well, you don't have anything. You usually, got something wacky and wild to go to. Um, I'm 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 a little concerned about um, you know, the humidity in this game. I think it's gonna be a major player. No, I, I got nothing. <laughs> I'm excited. Though. Some balls might get a little deflated. <sighs> Hopefully not. Won't be the first time. <laughs> yeah. So let's and start. Start with Joe. I want Ooh. score, prediction, and Super Bowl MVP. All right. Um, so Trifecta. my final score is 27 to 23. Um, my prediction is that defensive coordinator Todd Bowles has been on an absolute coaching tear. I trust him immensely in this matchup. I think that they're going to force Mahomes to make a couple key mistakes. Tampa Bay's going to win. Tampa Bay's going to win. Tom Brady is probably not going to play that well. He's going to win Super Bowl. MVP. He's going to win Super Bowl MVP, and the Bucks are going to win. Of course, Clark. you had to throw that one in there. Clark, you're up. Um, Very important. You said 27-23. Um, my score is 27-24, the same exact score from the, the previous matchup from this season when they faced – um, it's going to be a close game. It's going to be a very, very close game. Um, I can see Chiefs coming out to a little bit of a lead, actually, for a change um, coming out. You know, you don't really see that much with the Chiefs, them starting off too hot, because Brady first quarters, and uh, he never really scored. I don't think he ever scored any points like, in his first quarter in the Super Bowl, three, ever. Three points three the points. Rams. Exactly, and, and that was a crap game to begin with but Chiefs are going to get out to a pretty decent lead maybe 10 nothing or so it's going to look like it's over then it's going to keep going back and forth little Buccaneers come back here Chiefs are going to make their little comeback in the second half but when it's all said and done Buccaneers will win the Super Bowl it's very hard to bet against Tom Brady in the Super Bowl it's just very it is he's he's one six out of nine at this point going for seven out of ten Jesus Christ um 27-24 final Buccaneers win Tom Brady MVP Okay, here we go. Prediction, coin toss is heads. <laughs> okay, no, seriously. I'm going to do Tampa Bay winning in their home stadium. Final score, 35-0. to zero. No, 35-31. 35-31 with Michael Evans scoring two touchdowns and 100-plus receiving yards for – the Super Bowl MVP. Wow. Oh, baby. So you oh, guys are bad. you guys are riding with Tommy. I'm going on the other side. I'll be the lone man in the Chiefs kingdom. I'm calling oh, a shootout 38-34 with a, the singular defensive play coming down to the Kansas City Chiefs with a name we talked about quite a lot. You know, he's been the big, big acquisition that really is the heart and soul of that defense with Tyron Matthew getting a game-sealing interception – which gives him Super Bowl MVP that as be, well. That would be awesome. You're praying that for that, cool. Justin. That's You're awesome. praying for that. Well, I'm just praying for anything but Tom Brady because if uh, I spent a little bit of coin in Madden, so, coin, so, coin, so, um, dollar dollar bills. So with that, <laughs> I get a 99 Super Bowl MVP card, whoever that may be. So hoping it's not Tom Brady, but like I said, 38, 34 game ceiling interception by the Chiefs defense, giving Tyron Matthews Super Bowl MVP. Those are our picks. Don't know what Jesse is. He didn't really say anything. So <laughs> I'm sure he's probably – I knowing him, what do you guys think? Chiefs for him? Mm-hmm. I, I, think he, I think he went I Chiefs. Could see, I would guess Bucks, honestly. 
Wow. I don't know. Jesse Jesse hates Brady, so I don't know. Jesse just hates everything that's like good in the world sometimes with sports and football. The shop, right? Yeah, the can can right. sale. He loves that. But with that, that wraps up our Super Bowl 55 preview podcast. We'll be back sometime after the Super Bowl to break it down, whoever it may be that wins. But Clark, where can everyone listen to everything? Yeah, guys. Um, thank you guys for listening to this episode of the Sports Department Podcast. Us four. Appreciate you guys listening along with Jesse, who is enjoying the can can sale at Walmart right now. Uh, Walmart shop, shop right. right. Wait, wait, wait. Shop Before right. we wrap, uh, okay. I think Breeze is coming back. No, why? Breeze agrees to cut salary by $24 million. Saints QB Breeze will reduce 2021 pay from $25 million to that veterans minimum. Okay. Yeah, that, that's, okay, that's the mind. minimum I think you yeah. would need to retire. Never mind. He's, yeah. he, He's going to bye-bye. He's also, going to bye-bye. I was so excited right now. False, false, false. <laughs> no, that would have been terrible. That would, that would have been <laughs> terrible for the Saints, I know. Um, false alarm by Justin Breeze. Looks like he's retiring. That will be on a Hold Bob Nightingale. <laughs> yeah, oh, screw him. Um, like I said, thank you guys for listening. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you guys get your podcast from. Uh, follow us on our social medias on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Sports Dept Pod. That's Sports D E P T Pod. We have um, our episode with Jack Curry slash MLB Hostel that should just have came out before this one. So um, thanks to Jack Curry for joining us for that episode. Um, we just did this one, obviously. We're going to be breaking down the Super Bowl too. And I don't even know what else we have planned. We can throw in a basketball one. We have a mock draft one that Steve and Jesse recorded. I still have to edit. So that'll come down really soon. Sometime. Next week. That, that's that's waiting in the wings. So at, within the next hour. You said anytime. Yeah. 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 So whenever Justin wants to edit, edit that. that. Yeah. No, no. You, you guys backlogged me on a lot of podcasts. So I've yeah, been trying to bang them out while I'm sitting on the side of the road, shoveling and plowing some snow for the parkway. So great yeah. job getting content out for that and getting of it course. ready for me at least. But um, not, not really too much planned. Maybe uh, uh, NXT TakeOver is next Sunday. So we'll be predicting that. And that's about it. The football is ending. So it's going to get yeah. a lot more a lot quiet of, around here. A lot of off-season talk now. Yeah, exciting. Very exciting off-season for quarterbacks. So we already have some – we didn't even talk about the Stafford news yet and all that. Well, but we'll that, get to that, that in a future podcast. Yeah. But stay tuned to all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the next episode.